I got green light uh, to start. I was also told we have apparently extra time. Uh, so, well, I will know a bit more when the timer starts here, but welcome everybody. Uh, we, uh, I am Piotr Konieczny, and on behalf of myself and my uh, co-author, Shani Evenstein Sigalov, I'll be talking about the Wikipedia in education with the particular focus on what do teachers think about this. Unfortunately, Shani couldn't make it here today. Her flight got cancelled twice and sadly uh, she tries to join us online, but I was also told she's having computer troubles. So, uh, well, if she appears on the screen, then we know her, her trouble were fixed, at least digitally, but if not, well, I know she really wanted to be here, but she couldn't. Um, uh, okay, so this is my small note about who is taking up your time, we are, and we are talking about some, I hope, really cool stuff, which is again, what teachers think about uh, Wikipedia in higher education, or roughly in education in general, but our research is pretty much focused on the higher education. We surveyed instructors, almost all of them were in the higher education setting, so pretty much this is you know, what we are going to talk about it. Now, as you know, um, there have been quite a lot of studies in the past done on Wikipedia in education. And we know certainly that students uh, are interested in them, that they have various educational benefits. But what me and Shani decided to do was to look at what, what about teachers? What do teachers, educators, and so on actually think about this assignment? Because in all the quite a few studies we have about educational benefits of Wikipedia in education, of students' thoughts on this, on practical guides, how to actually do this, on many cool things you can do with students in class. Well, we found that, that pretty much nobody looked in any depth at what do teachers actually think about it? Do they like it? Do they maybe have some issues with this? What can we make better for the teachers? So this is pretty much what I'm going to be talking about. And also on some other data we got while we are doing survey of quite a few people. Maybe some of you even here were kind enough to reply to our uh, email, emails and survey requests. So again, I want to thank everybody who did so and uh, invite you to take part in surveys in the future. They are useful things. All right. So. Um, what is the purpose of our research? Again, as I said, investigating what do teachers think and the educators think about Wikipedia and education. Because we are doing our research uh, shortly at the, uh, after the end of the corona pandemic, we also looked into this briefly, but this is not the main focus, but I will make a few comments about how did the uh, corona pandemic affected uh, our, entire, uh, our entire setting. So uh, now let's take a look at some uh, more specific things. A few more notes again. We hope that our research, what I'm going to be talking about, will be useful from the perspective of open education, which of course open uh, and so on is, are the themes uh, of Wikimania and our broader movement. And again, doing things on Wikipedia and teaching with Wikipedia, as Derek said in today's uh, opening uh, uh, keynote, is something that really all educators should be doing. Also, if all they were all doing, we'll be overwhelmed with student assignments. So maybe let's just hope we are going to moderately increase the educators' involvement with Wikipedia, because otherwise, well, we would need some uh, big revolution. Now, um, what are we going to actually find out here? Well, something about educators' retention is certainly uh, one of the cool findings here. But uh, first, let's talk about the basic demographics. So when we looked into who is teaching with Wikipedia, we see that there is no significant bias, gender bias, among educators. In fact, more teachers, at least in our survey, are female than male. So this is something that is worth noting. Uh, again, uh, lot, we know that a lot of uh, Wikipedia uh, suffers from gender bias. We have uh, much fewer women contributors, much less coverage about women topics. I think many people know about this. But at least in the education, in the practice of who is using Wikipedia in education, we can see that this doesn't seem to be a problem. At least um, based on our res responses, we do have some limitations because of who replied. Uh, First, a small note on the age. In the age, we see a pretty much random distribution. People are applying both people who have taught, who have started their teaching careers, as well as some seniors, uh, more senior educators. 
So with regards to the age, well, people who are teaching Uzbeki are both young and old. We do not see, and some people expected, that we would see mostly young educators using Wikipedia. No, it seems like there is no big correlation between age and teachers who use Wikipedia. Um, what we do have uh, as a not, as a notice, and that may be uh, part, uh, partially because of how our research was designed. I mean, we are trying to reach to the global community, but almost everybody who answered our questions came from United States. We did have a few hundred replies, so it was not a tiny sample. We tried to reach the global communities through various listers, educational discussion groups, and so on. But as you can see from the big blue parts of the chart, most of the responses we got were from the United States. So now, does, does it mean that most of the, research, of the teaching with uh, Wikipedia is really happening in the US, or for some reason we, uh, that we still are not sure about exactly what it is, we just couldn't get in touch with teachers doing it elsewhere? This is something for the discussion later. I, I think our, in the, from what I know also, seeing uh, this educational activities done in different projects, um, and such as Chinese, Korean, Polish, and so on, it does, I think, uh, unfortunately, uh, represent the truth that most uh, of the educational activities are happening in English. And this is one of the things we think we should try to change, get more outreach to non-English part of our community with regards, yes, you can use Wikipedia in education. Um, so this is one of our conclusions here at the very beginning. And here, again, you can look at our data online uh, in a short while. Now, how do people learn about teaching with Wikipedia? Uh, we find out that they mostly, interestingly, learn about it from colleagues. Uh, to a lesser degree, they learn uh, they learned from Wiki, Wiki education or at conferences. Uh, but a lot of people, again, almost pretty much a third of, or actually a third of those who replied to us said, I learned about teaching with education from a colleague. So this is also a message to all of you here and listening to me. Well, tell your colleagues that they can do this. It's cool. If they hear it from you, you know, it comes with social capital and they are more likely to do it than, you know, if they just read it in some paper and so on. People do learn about it from papers, but actually this is very... Uh, this, is, this is a very small number. As somebody who writes papers about this, I'm somewhat disappointed. Only 3.5% of people told they learned about this from academic papers. So, well, yes, uh, I, I guess talking like this is more useful. Um, one of the funniest things we found, almost 10% of people claim they have invented this on their own. Good job. Also means that this is something that many, you know, many smart minds think alike. They think we can do this, and they create this from scratch. Maybe later finding out we have community and tools. But again, 10% of our respondents said they invented this teaching with Wikipedia on their own. Later, of course, they might have found out they weren't the first. But again, good job. Maybe even some of you here started this without community support, which we are now trying to make much more common. Most educators usually who replied taught only about one or two courses. There are some people who taught more, seven, eight, and so on. But most people who replied just started doubling with this. But as later you will see, they are still trying to do more. Also, most of people who reply to us uh, come from social sciences or humanities. And the so sciences uh, and generally the entire STEM sector is, I think, significantly underrepresented here. As you can see, about uh, two thirds, if not uh, about three quarters of people who reply to us are from the softer side of the sciences, which means leads to another small conclusion. It seems that our uh, outreach to the STEM sector is not that uh, not that good. We can make some improvements here and try to get more teachers from you know math, uh, physics, uh, and all the other STEM topics interested in what we are doing. Maybe to some degree this is because what we are doing here. I mean, we are more closer to social sciences than physical sciences, and this represents our networks. Like our colleagues are more likely to be in social science and humanities. And as you have seen from the previous graphs, this is how we are spreading in the education environment. So again. Maybe we need to make more friends in the hard sciences, reach out to them more. This is something to think about. All right. Now, 
Uh, what about the assignments? The assignments that people uh, seem uh, to prefer are usually a semester-long activity, yeah, some, uh, something like writing or creating uh, articles, and that uh, it's not a short activity. It accounts for a, a portion of the final grade, the, the, what portion it varies, and again, it involves primarily contributions to Wikipedia. So those are things uh, that students do. And they are expanding, reviewing, and creating articles on Wikipedia. Um, adding media is relatively rare, and I'm a bit surprised about this. I mean, I think adding media, uploading pictures to commons, making infographics in particular, and so on, is a pretty cool activity, but it's not something that seems to be happening. Uh, this accounts only for few percentage of the educational activity, which I think is actually a missed opportunity again, because Wikipedia needs good illustrations, infographics, and so on in particular. Students actually have good skills here, but we are not using them. So this is something I will highlight as, I think, another uh, form of imbalance in what we are having students uh, to do, or in this case, what we are not having them to do. All right. Now, what, what, more, uh, what else do we know about the assignments? They require... Uh, about a few hours of class time. Um, and again, as I mentioned, they account for a portion of the final grade. Uh, actually, here we have numbers about 25% of the final grades on average is uh, uh, comes from the wiki assignment when we look at what people are doing with this. Um, now, they are also not optional, uh, as again, some of you may know from practice, telling students you could do it on Wikipedia or not will result in them not doing this usually on Wikipedia. So again, if you want to have Wikipedia assignments in class, make sure that students have to do it. Otherwise, unfortunately, they will often choose the easy way out and avoid doing things on Wikipedia. And again, here have some slides that I'm zooming in so people online can uh, review them in more detail before our publications. Now, interestingly, about half of the educators who have engaged with Wikipedia in class have done edits to Wikipedia before. And also about the same number replied that they kept making edits to Wikipedia as volunteers and so on after the class. So this is an interesting, again, I think, uh, note that for many people, engagement with Wikipedia in class comes after actual the fact that they start making them elsewhere. Maybe, again, related to how they found out about it. About half of the educator, I would say, also follow what I think personally are best practices, which is they ask students to do what they have done themselves, which also means that about half of the educators ask students to do things they don't have not done themselves and may not know how to do them. Also about how the educators discuss assignments in class. Uh, we do think that this is related again to the success or failure ratio uh, in, again, assignment success. Also we need to work on our data a bit more, but if you don't the, discuss the assignment in class, if you don't, if you ask students to do things you don't know yourself, we think that may lead to more uh, failure in the assignments. Uh, uh, in the assignments, so again, we think best practices involve knowing what students do and being able to help them because you have done the same things yourself and have demonstrated them. A uh, few more things about what the students do. Students primarily work in sandboxes, not in the evil, terrible draft space. Sorry, I have biases against draft space. Apologize here to any fans of the draft space. I know it's necessary. But for the educational assignments, we know it doesn't work. I mean, we don't use draft spaces because we cannot wait months for the students' work to be reviewed from in the draft space. So again, fortunately, for various reasons, most educators have figured out that draft spaces are not for us and students work in sandboxes. Fortunately also, now students use visual editor. And of course, this is a major improvement over having them coding things in the past. We know visual editor is not perfect, but it certainly makes things easier for the average person out there and the students are generally your average people. And this is also related, I believe, we believe, to why students say and instructors that, well, engaging with Wikipedia has some issues, but they are coding, uh, learning how to code or Wikipedia code is no longer a major issue. If you recall from 10 or so years ago, some early research on this uh, on Wikipedia uh, in education. Uh, we had some complaints about, well, it's cool, but learning how to do code, ho do, uh, how to code media week and so on was a problem. Well, it's no longer a problem these days. So here's for the visual editor and 
the slow but steady progress in trying to make a wiki interface a bit better. Interestingly, students do not work in groups. And this is surprising because we generally tend to think Wikipedia is all about collaboration. Students are supposed to work in groups because they learn you know, collaboration skills, but no, actually most of the assignments are not done in groups. And again, this is curious and I, can, I have to say, I don't really know exactly why I was expecting to find that they mostly will work in groups, but they don't. Uh, and we, we, are, we would be happy to hear from some of you later in the discussion, maybe you will have some insight into why individual assignments are more common than groups. Peer review is common, again, that's uh, best practices, right? Uh, it's good to have students review one another work, review various things, and this is fortunately what is often happening in the wiki assignments. And, and this is also true for presentations and reflexive papers. We don't just assign students to write on the wiki, we also want them to discuss about this, think about why it's beneficial for their career, for the world, and so on, and this is generally done. So, good job us, I guess, as far as you know, talking about educators, and quite a few things seem to be working out with what we are doing. Now, I'll talk about the tools and materials we have that we provide for educators and so on, and what we, as educators, on the other hand, think about this. So, we have some good tools, but also quite a few tools that don't seem to be very popular or known about. First, uh, so for example, we have the dashboard tool developed uh, by the, uh, our coders at the Wiki Foundation and later the Wiki Edu. And this is a very good tool. The dashboard tool is very popular. People generally like it. Sage will be talking about this later. Sage is in the audience. And he'll be telling people more about the dashboard. So if you don't know about the dashboard, make sure to stop at uh, Sage's presentations later because this is a tool that I use, people, many people use, and we are happy with this. On the other hand, where we, say where we have identified a big gap, at least we think it's a big gap, are video tutorials. People cannot find them, they are obsolete, they are not well categorized. I personally looked at categorization of them on commons and it's a mess. And yes, people generally say, we would love to have good video tutorials for my, my students, for myself, and we are failing at providing them. I know people are trying to do them, they, but again, there's some kind of failing, at least when it comes to people, again, complaining about this. They don't think we are doing a good job here. So for those working on this, we need more good video tutorials. People want them. Uh, what else? Brochures, portals have a limited impact. Uh, we used to have some printable brochures. I recently learned that it's becoming less common, at least outside the United States. Maybe this is the reason people are saying, well, we don't really use them, we don't have them. Even through PDFs are online, again, maybe this partially people don't know how to find our PDFs, people don't want to print them. Uh, many other things have also limited uh, impact. People don't know about them. For example, the educational, port, port, uh, the educational portal at outreach.wikimedia.org slash wiki slash education. Most of our respondents said we don't know it exists. What works here? Uh, certainly the help uh, from staff in particular, I believe WikiEdu is doing a very good job. Uh, those who work with WikiEdu in the United States and Canada are pretty happy with what WikiEdu is doing. Good job, guys. If you are here from the WikiEdu, you are doing a good job. Now, uh, please help the rest of the world because WikiEdu is mostly focusing on the United States and Canada. And we really need some kind of, I think, outreach to the rest of the world, which kind of goes back to the slides earlier where I showed this is something that's mostly done in the United States, people in Canada, people in the US and Canada are quite uh, common in our in doing this assignment. The rest of the world, I think, is not supported well enough, and this is something we should try to change. Um, there are also people who say volunteers are helpful, but not as much as the dedicated staff. So this is something to consider. I mean, there's a reason why WikiEdu and so on exist, because volunteers can only do so much. Um, and I mentioned again, quite a few other things are generally having very little impact, and there's a big list here of things that, for various reasons, are not particularly seen as useful, or for the most part, are generally not seen as all. We have newsletters, we have educational notice boards, we have listserv, we have various community design tools, I even designed some myself, they are on Wikipedia pages. The social media is generally not visible, people don't, uh, don't use this, and anything done in, no, that's not in English is also reported as not being particularly useful. So there are a lot of things here, I'll just quickly go through the slides because, again, for those of you who will be 
reviewing this online and want to zoom in, but as you can see, people generally say, no, I don't know this stuff even exists. Wikipedia Educational Notice Board, no, I don't know about this. This, no, I don't know. I don't know there's a listserv. Do we have a social media presence? I don't know about it, and so on and so on. So again, a lot of things I think are just not really on people's radar. But again, the most demanded thing that people thing they, that it doesn't exist are video tutorials. I'll just come back and mention, we do have those video tutorials, they are just hard to find. Um, and again, this is uh, a note. Now, let's talk about uh, motivations and challenges. Uh, so again, uh, in the, if, if we just try to summarize this, well, students uh, and instructors generally like the Wikipedia educational activity. So this is one of the takeaways. You know, we are doing something good. Uh, because people who try this generally like this. There are some difficulties, it's more time consuming, but again, we kind of all know this, you know, if we want to be good teachers, good educators, we are going to have to do something that's, you know, going to take some of our time. So this is not that surprising, but uh, it is uh, just confirming what we know. So when educators, so when we want to do the wiki assignment, why do we do this? Well, because we like, you know, open educational resources, we like the fact that it's free, it's free as in beer, free as a libre, it's open license, you know, we like all the open stuff. And we know also that it's good for the students, we have a lot of research on this that I'm not going to summarize, but, you know, we have tens of, uh, well, we have at least hundred, close to 100, if not more, uh, good papers out there where people uh, talk about ad, uh, Writing on Wikipedia and so on is good for the student. It increases their digital literacy and it achieves various objectives. So, you know, we have a lot of research on this and we are not putting it here because that's not what we are talking about. But again, it's good for the students and we know this. Now, um, sir, another aspect is, I think, service learning. In other words, feeling good about what we are doing. I mean, you know, we are creating those open resources and at the same time, you know, we are helping the world. We are making the world a better place. Students like it and we, the educators, like it as well. I mean, that's one of the reasons I think most of you are here. You know, this wiki stuff is cool. It's making our world a better place. And if we can mix it with our job, we feel better about our job as well because we are you know, going above and beyond and helping. And this is, again, what our respondents reply. We are interested in doing this wiki stuff because we think it helps the world. It makes the world better and it makes us feel better about what we are doing. And this is also related to what students are saying. But anyway, I hear some data. Instructors, educators, they like the assignment. They plan on doing it again, which is a quite a good note on the retention. We don't have like extremely good data on the retention as in how we don't know exactly if people are doing this, but we generally know that they want to do it again. It is a good indicator. And they also want to recommend it to others. And that's very good because as I mentioned, our study suggests that this is how people find out and start doing this. So again, I will ask you, talk to your colleagues about this, try to use your social capital to get more people you know, get this, it's recommended to others. This is indeed how this works. I mean, we don't advertise on TV. We don't have, you know, some other ways of really telling people. And social media doesn't seem to be doing a good job here as, as, as our research shows. So it's really word to mouse, trying to spread things more. And yes, students uh, like it, as I mentioned. Um, at least that's what the instructors think, because we didn't interview students here. But we interviewed, I mean, we interviewed and there is surveyed researchers, I mean, ed educators about what the students think. And yes, we do believe as educators that students learn more through this assignment. And we also think the students are motivated. And that's backed up by other research from the students themselves. So, yep, okay, students, it's good for the students. They seem to like it. All good. Now, where do we have a slight hiccups? Uh, well, we do have those challenges. Um, certainly, we all know Wikipedia is time-consuming. Learning how to use Wikipedia is time-consuming. Fortunately, we have moved beyond the early, scary days of you need to learn how to do Wikicode. I mean, Wikicode is nice. Some people like to learn it. Some students from computer science and so on, it would be good for them to learn. But for most people, code is not that important. and. That's fine, but that's certainly people will, people say, well, this Wikipedia assignment, it takes quite a lot of my time, or at least more time than some other traditional regular assignments. And I think there's nothing we can do about it, realistically speaking, I mean, I, or no, I should go back. We can try to make our interface better. We can try to design better tools. But at the end of the day, you know, if we want to be good educators, if we want to do things which are Again, above and beyond, it does going to take us a bit more time than somebody who doesn't really care about the students and the field. So, 
Now we can keep improving, but this is going to be always, I think, a bit more challenging. And that includes also grading. People do say that grading wiki assignments, uh, learning how to make them and so on, is a bit more time consuming than for the regular assignments. And again, we can try to develop better tools, for example, in grading, maybe integrate something related to grades with uh, the uh, dashboard. So there are many things that could be done in the future, uh, like maybe be able to provide feedback to students to the dashboard, and then a lot of ideas we could brainstorm, and maybe we'll be brainstorming them later at Sage's uh, um, lecture. All right, so here just some data from the slides for people who want to zoom in later. And as, again, I mentioned this before, but really in the past I heard a lot of people complaining about, oh, I cannot do wiki because all that code. Nope, it's not the case now. We ask people, do you have uh, like you no know, trouble with coding on the wiki? And most students say, no, Wikipedia is not really particularly complex. Doing this is not that hard from the coding perspective and so on. And again, I uh, credit visual editor with this. It makes things you know, nicer and friendlier. Also, we found out that fortunately, students' articles are not often deleted. They do, uh, so some people are occasionally concerned that my students' articles will be deleted. This doesn't happen often. It does happen every now and then. One person even raised a concern about student content causing, uh, ca causing potential trouble for the community earlier uh, today uh, uh, during the keynote uh, the, uh, panel. But from the research, as well as my personal experience, I can say that no, most student articles don't seem to have to cause trouble in the community. Most of them are not deleted. Of course, there are exceptions, particularly when instructors don't follow best practices. I mean, some of you may know the story from, I don't know, 10 years ago or something, where there, were, there was a professor who asked students to vandalize Wikipedia to demonstrate something. You know, that's uh, not a good idea for responsible teaching. But you know, generally speaking, students don't cause much trouble, uh, particularly if the teachers who are supervising them know enough about Wikipedia to make sure that they create articles on notable topics, they are well formatted, they have references and follow Wikipedia guidelines. So if we know things about Wiki and can teach it to students, well, the students should not have more trouble than average editor, and in fact, I think even less trouble. What surprised me a bit is that also student teachers say they do not have difficulty in finding topics for students to edit. I mean, there are certainly millions of missing topics that need to be created, certainly, but on the other hand, low-hanging fruit is often already gone, or at least that's what I thought here. Um, I learned that this is not exactly the case. Uh, so, well, that's good, I guess, if we have no trouble finding things. All right, so pretty much this is, uh, we, we are slowly running out of time, so I'll be just uh, summarizing things here with this pretty much saying what I mentioned earlier. And I mentioned earlier we'd also be talking a bit about corona impact, and this is really just going to be a bit because we thought uh, that there is going to be more impact that corona pandemic caused on people using Wikipedia education and so on, and we found out that this is not really the case. Uh, in, People were not only saying that Corona caused them trouble when they were doing wiki assignments, possibly because they were already digital, so digital assignments were not really affected as much, or the classes using them were transitioning from from face to face to the digital setting without having to significantly change the assignments. So this actually is my experience as well. I just had to change a few minor details in my syllabus, and the courses were running uh, online just as they were running uh, offline. Um, so, also looking at the data about the number of courses, the number of courses hasn't decreased significantly. In fact, I should uh, correct myself, uh, when I looked at the number of courses on the dashboard uh, with regards to the uh, educational projects, they've been steadily increasing, pandemic hasn't affected them. So, using Wikipedia in education is growing and wasn't really affected by the corona. So, there's that. All right, this is pretty much all I was going to say, and now it's time to have some questions. I think I have the mic, so I'll just pass on the mic to the person with the hand. Mic's mic. I'm sorry, did I miss the slide where you explained? Okay, well, okay. Let, let's uh, do mic I'll switch. I'll say it again. Did I miss the slide where you explained what proportion of the students were high school versus university students uh, and their ages? So we did not. Uh, so we did not study students. We studied instructors. Yes. So what proportion of the instructors were high school versus university? Um, instructors? I think uh, we didn't include that slide. Uh, I think almost all, like ninety-nine percent, people came from higher education. Okay. So I, I think maybe that's why this did, this didn't make it into our slides because uh, the proportion of people doing this outside higher education is very slim. At least we couldn't reach them.
Uh, do you have any data about which Wikimedia projects educators were using? I believe we do, because they did make it in the slide, and the answer is, again, almost 90 plus percent Wikipedia. Um, generally speaking, very few, as from, I would say, all, there's almost no use of other projects like Wikisource, Wikivoyage, Wikidata, and it can be done. I am actually running myself Wikivoyage and Wikidata courses, but I believe they are pretty rare. Like I was actually recently told by people from Wikivoyage that I am the only instructor they know who ever engaged with their project. And uh, again, uh, maybe there's, I mean, they, they didn't know about everything, but yes, people generally think about Wikipedia, teach about use Wikipedia, Occasionally, you know, we can think uploading pictures to commons counts as engaging with commons. Wikidata has a lot of potential and it's not very well used in education and everything else. I think most people sadly don't even know it exists. Again, I would think Wiki, Wiki News would be good for journalist courses. I don't think it's happening there, but good question and we need to do more with that. Uh, this is more of an answer to a question you asked some time ago. You were wondering why people, why students don't seem to engage with, uh, you know, to upload files. You know, you were surprised that that was low. I think, and this has been sort of an issue of mine for years, that the answer is probably in our fair, in our image, in our fair use and copyright policies. I mean, we have a lot of Wikimedians who don't fully understand those, and we have worse, we have some who misunderstand them. Well, since, uh, you know, especially with today's generation of students, there has been this long under understanding that, well, if I can get it somewhere on the internet, I can use it. And as we know, you know, just because you can download it doesn't mean it's in the public domain, doesn't mean it's under a free license. And even if you, as, as a student, do find what would be an acceptable fair use image, to upload it to the English Wikipedia requires writing the whole justification. And I remember years ago a stat that I found rather telling that for many new users, for almost all the new users whose first edit was to file or image namespace, they never uploaded again, which tells me they uploaded something, it was deleted, and they just said to hell with it. And I think that's uh, something that maybe if we want to promote that kind of student engagement, we need to find ways to better explain that because, like I said, I feel like I'm in the minority of Wikimedians on the English Wikipedia on Commons who understand what would be deleted and what would not be deleted before uploading it. That's a very good point. I have my students, I tell my students about copyright, I give them tutorials and still 25% will upload pictures they found somewhere on the internet and claim it's their own because that's the pull down menu. So yes, we should do something better here. Yeah, I just had a question about the first few slides you showed where you talked about the gender bias and the age uh, bias on the people who answered and you're talking also about uh, higher education and there is a strong gender bias among, or gender difference among the teachers in higher education and there's also the experience in teaching there's also a, a big difference in experience in teaching and so I wondered if you took that into account in your study um, I think that this is certainly possible I mean there is correlation to gender and uh, people uh, choosing the I mean jobs uh, uh, but like we do have uh, something more balanced or possibly even skewed towards females in some fields of education but not all and uh, this is again depends on countries here we are really getting data from United States saying I mean and, and okay and because again those are who are our respondents so again to what degree this would be representative if we had really good worldwide data? I mean, the problem is, again, this is not something that seems to be done worldwide. So I think you raise good questions that uh, well, partially point out to things we need to work. We need to improve the gender ratio in um, all spheres of life. And the fact that here we see possibly no significant bias could simply be, well, because our data really comes from small segment of population. Um, my name is Nurjana Talan. I teach um, in um, the US with Wiki Education projects and uh, Wikipedia. Uh, my, uh, the topics my students engage in is climate and sustainability. I'm a social scientist. Um, and there are only two faculty at our institution. Um, the other faculty is male and he teaches in physics. Um, my question, and 
I also um, collaborate with Wiki Turkey, and we also did an implementation in Wikipedia Turkey, in Turkish, uh, with faculty, and we collaborated with the Wikipedia team there and the GLEM um, professionals. Um, and I would like to say, um, are there any plans to expand Wiki education, um, tutorials, training of faculty, as well as the dashboard to other areas? Because all the problems you said, they existed to some extent in the American dashboard. Um, but in Turkey, we had six mentors dealing with 28 students for a whole semester, and the quality of the outcome was not the same. And it also takes a lot of time to convince faculty when they know that they have to really, really commit a lot of time um, you know, to actually go through everything where there are no videos, where there is no dashboard, where there is not necessarily a staff to deal with them. Thank you. So I'm afraid like I'm not the good person to answer whether there are plans because I am not a member of the staff at WMF or WikiEdu and so on. Um, the, I think there should be plans to address this. Actually, this is one of the things I said. There should be more plans uh, to create those tools, to make them available globally for communities outside just the United States and uh, Canada. But whether such plans exist or to what degree they are prioritized, I am unfortunately out of the loop here. My research, I mean, our research is really just one of those voices saying we need more outreach globally. We are doing a pretty good job for US, Canada, maybe English-speaking countries. But outside of that, we are not, we need to catch up. Uh, right here, Peter. Right here. Yeah, sorry, right here. Being <laughs> okay. There. Okay. Because I, I saw two. Uh, Was there another hand? Yep. Uh, well, okay. But maybe I will start here and then. One question online, please. Uh, okay. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll be I'll be quick. Uh, first, thank you so much for the for the research, Peter, and and your your previous work. Um, you've done quite a bit in this area. I want to point out that the, the, the finding that, you know, it, teachers are motivated to do this by their colleagues is a really important one. And it's a good reminder for everybody in this room to kind of go home and, and, and with a, a renewed energy and really kind of spread the good word about these types of assignments. Um, and then my question is, we, uh, I had actually done a similar study about instructor motivation. We pulled directly from the Wiki Education programs, uh, participants, their instructors, and we were looking at their motivation, like why were they interested in doing this, similar to you. But we had found that a, uh, a good majority of them were really motivated by addressing uh, systemic gaps, issues of uh, social equity, um, those types of things. So I'm wondering if you had any findings or data related to that. So we haven't asked the question directly related to this. I would say from my memory of the qualitative analysis of the comments that there are indicators. I mean, I think I, you are correct. And our research would roughly support yours, but we haven't looked into this issue in detail. But again, the comment do suggest people care about like service learning. People care about making the world a better place. To put make put it simply, so yes, that's I mean I think why most of us are here as well in this very room or watching this video. You know, we want to have the uh, do something impactful, and this is a way to do it. Okay, so one last question from online, talking about disseminate the opportunity to use Wiki in class. Where can I, as an educator, learn more about integrating Wiki in my class? What should I do to start? And where can I see the previous examples or test cases of using Wiki in class? All right. I mean, this is a good question. So there's both both a good and bad answer. I mean, the good uh, the good uh, answer is that there are a lot of materials out there online. If people Google for that, go to Google Scholar, they will find quite a lot of materials. But the, the bad part is that our central hub, we have central hubs, but as you have seen from the graphs, the like outreach, educa wiki education for, for, and so on, they are not very visible. I think maybe they don't come out that high in search results. They are not very well known. Most people have difficulty finding them. So the good news is that, that there are tools, including papers written by me about how to actually integrate wiki in your curriculum and so on. 
the bad news is that um, people have to find one of those hubs, like maybe one of them I remember just from the top of my head on English Wikipedia, WP colon SUP school university project, that's a page uh, that has quite a few links, for example, people can start. And again, the, the ones I linked from the slides, the outreach something something, I forget now the exact address, again, look at the slide, there are some links, uh, one of the things we found, we haven't put on the slides, that some people actually said, it's thank you for telling me about those other tools, now I know they exist, I'll take a look at them. So again, take a look at the information we have on the slides, some of this may be useful to people who are just starting to with all of that. There are useful tools, we just don't seem to be doing a very good job at promoting them.